Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Jake. And in this video, we're going to be looking at abstraction. So far, we have looked at most of the concepts you need to start creating sophisticated programs. Yeah, but I'm just wondering how I should put all of these concepts together in order to create more complex programs. All right, I think the secret is to start thinking about the data. And this is where we come up with the idea of abstractions. Building abstractions in our programs that represent things yep. uh, and allow us to have a small amount of code that works with data in a sort of a flexible way. Yeah, and that makes sense because data is much more flexible to change than code is. That's correct. Cool. So here is a program we use early on in our Introduction to Programming unit, and it draws a house. Yeah. Now that is very specific code, yeah? Yeah, it's drawing the same house every time we run the program. That's right. And that's because all of the intelligence is built into the instructions. We haven't right. really thought about how the data would be organized for this program. So I guess what you mean by abstractions is moving the information regarding where to draw the house, what color, and all the information related to that house, and moving that into data so that that can be easily modified and building a program that can build a house depending on the data that it has. Yes, that's correct. Okay, what we can do is we can change this by introducing some abstractions. So coming up with the idea, the core ideas of this program. So the core ideas of this program are the shapes that we are seeing on the screen. Exactly. And so we want to have shapes in our program. So here is an extended version of this program right. that can draw any kind of shape. Yeah. We've modeled the different data that we want related to the program in a shape record. So the programmer has thought of all the information that they need or that they think they need in order to draw a house and structured that data in, a, in a, using a struct. Yep. And uh, using that struct in their programs, they can model houses. Yeah, or, or any, other, any other type right, of picture. Exactly. The idea here is now we've got a picture or a shape drawing program. We can cool. illustrate things, yep. for example. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so we would have functions and procedures that then manipulate and work with that shape data. Yep. And so you can draw like an array of shapes, which would draw a picture yep. to the screen. And the way you would draw your house then is to create a rectangle a piece of data representing the rectangle of the yep. house, the triangle, and then triangle the, the ellipse door, for the background, yeah, etc. Exactly. Uh, and the cool thing is, it's so much easier to work with now. We can also do things like save that off to a file. Yeah. Uh, you could possibly send it over the network. Yeah, and when we, we can read in that data from a file and when we draw the shapes, we haven't had anything coded into the code, really, that tells it where to draw the shapes. We're taking that information from a file. Yeah, so it's the idea of making the program more general. It works in a more abstract sense. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at another early program, the Morse calling program. So if you remember yeah. that one, it had lots of procedures, one procedure for each letter of the alphabet. Yeah, and because I was only writing one small message, it only had four procedures, but yeah. the entire alphabet plus that's over 30 procedures, that's way too much. Yeah, and the problem is, if you want to combine them together, it becomes very difficult because yeah. now you have to have something like a case statement. You know, yeah. if it's the letter yep. A, call play A. If it's very B, cumbersome. call play B. It's going to be lots and lots of code to do a task. Yeah. Using abstraction, we should be able to make this much simpler. And so what we've got here is a new version of the Morse calling program. Cool. The first thing is to, to focus on the data. So here we have long and short signals because yep. that's sort of the core essence of yep. Morse code. And we have Morse code characters, and each character is an array of signals. So just like our drawing program, this is a, a structure of all the information we need in order to play a, a Morse code beep. Yeah, uh, so know, this sequence. is the abstraction. Exactly, yeah. it's taking yeah. that, uh, that idea. Pr procedures and that, yeah. Yeah, that idea and moving it into a data structure. Yeah, creating a data structure to represent the information about yeah. it, yes. And now what we can do, uh, we use an array here of, of characters inside the Morse code character Yep. Because and it's dynamic array. Yeah. Uh, because some characters have fewer yeah, signals have than others. Yep. So this allows us to have a different yep. number in each one. So when we go and play a character, it's just a matter of looping through that character's array yeah. and playing each of the signals, exactly. whether they are long or short signals. We don't need to tell the program in the code what to play. 
it knows from the data that it receives. Yeah, and we can even then load in those Morse code characters from exactly. file, which is then so much easier to edit. Yeah, and it means that we don't have to uh, hard code these tones to these characters. Yeah, and it's much easier. We can actually look, if you look at the actual file here, you can see each of the characters and exactly what, what dots and dashes yeah, it represents. Yeah, that's, that's really quite readable to anyone. Yeah. And make sure that we actually get it right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the big the key. one. Yeah. Uh, then playing a message is as simple as looping through all of the characters in the string yep. and finding the matching Morse code character yep. and telling our play character procedure to play that character. Exactly. So we don't need That's it for abstraction. Really the key is to try to think about the kinds of information that you're going to work with yep. and then coming up with the functions and procedures to manipulate that data. Yep. The secret is to have really smart data. Yep. Yeah. And then your procedures and functions sort of will come out of that. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this also leads very much onto our, one of our future topics, which is object-oriented programming. Yep. That has really elegant ways of managing abstractions yep. using objects. Yep. Uh, but that just builds upon what we've learned here. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a way of reorganizing yep. it. Exactly. Okay, that's it for this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Bye. This has been a Spindle introduction.